Hi, everybody. It is May 5, 2021. 20, 20, I want to thank my subscriber for sending this along. It's a CIA document, a document that uh, years ago was shared by many of us, uh, circulated by others, and I'm, I was reminded of this when my subscriber sent it to me. So thank you. It's a good reminder. And therefore, I am posting it again. I'm going to read excerpts of this CIA document. The um, countering criticism of the Warren report, the Warren Commission that investigated JFK's assassination came up with, oh, who did it? And it was all just like the 9-11 Commission report that had so much wrong with it. But the CIA, their job is to counter the criticisms. And it was the CIA that came up with the term conspiracy theory. So all those who are calling you a conspiracy theorist are CIA puppets. They're agents of the CIA just uh, continuing to perpetrate their agenda to get rid of all truth. You know, remember also, William Casey, CIA director under Ronald Reagan, the Reagan administration, stating We'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. Well, we're there. Obviously, we're not part of the American public, not part of the masses. Why we're not, I don't know. You know, I heard myself before making, before starting this video saying, be proud that you're not part of that public. But it's not a matter of pride. Why, why it is that uh, we understand that there's an awful lot of agendas that we're not being told the truth. I'm not entirely sure why. You know, what makes the difference between us and them? the masses who refuse to even look into, consider that they could be lied to by our fabulous government because there are so many, there are so many differences between all of us. You know, it, it's hard to really understand why. But, you know, if you... If you are someone who believes the truth is important, then you'll get there. You will unfold yourself from the lies. All right. Um, our concern, our concern from the day of President Kennedy's assassination on, there has been speculation about the responsibility for this murder, for his murder. Warren Commission report, well, there was a lot of questions about that report. A new wave of books and articles criticizing the Commission's findings. In most cases, the critics have speculated as to the existence of some kind of conspiracy. Often they have implied that the commission itself was involved. A poll recently indicated that 46% of the American public did not think that Oswald acted alone, while more than half of those polled thought that the commission had left some questions unresolved. What happened back then happened with the 9-11 Commission. 
This has been going on for so long. That's why it was so, so important for the American people to believe that truth was important and to hold those accountable for their lies. They keep repeating the same uh, program against the, the American public, and they fall for it and fall for it. Now, we fell for it until we stopped falling for it. What, what then can bring the individual to stop falling for it? Well, you know, the, the psyche, the American psyche, then the individual Americans have a psyche that says, oh, I'm too afraid to be disapproved of. I have to go along to get along. There's so much psychology wrapped up in why people behave as they behave. That's true for us. It's true for them. It's true for anybody. They understand the psychology. They understand it. They've studied it. They're using it against the American people. They know that a majority of the American people lack a moral core. They know that a majority of the American people have been infantilized. That was one of the programs. You know, the American people never grow up. And they're always looking, you know, for daddy and mommy to tell them what to do. Well, I'm sorry for, oh boy, do I transgress all the time. Okay, so because they were concerned that a lot of people were questioning the Warren Commission report, that there were a whole new set of books and articles written criticizing the report and questioning the findings. A whole lot of people were doing their own investigations of JFK's assassination and they had to put a stop to it. Who's they? The CIA. And mainstream media is pretty much controlled by the CIA. You may as well just, you know, stop calling it mainstream media and just call it CIA. All right, so this document, this meeting, was to instruct those assets to get out there and speak the propaganda to the truth and get it stopped. Get people to stop questioning the JFK assassination, the Warren Commission report, and, you know, shame them, criticize them. And eventually, the American people, when they begin to see this, they'll stop questioning. Oh, they may have some questions going on, you know, in between, you know, the, their skull, inside their brain. But dare to voice it to another. Well, there's a risk. You could be disapproved of. And it stops an awful lot of people from speaking out. All right, so the trend of opinion is a matter of concern to the U.S. government, including our organization, the CIA. The members of the Warren Commission were naturally chosen for their integrity, their experience, their prominence. They represented both parties. Haven't we heard that before? Isn't that the claim always? The uh, criminals took over the U.S. government a very long time ago. What do criminals do when they want to make sure their crimes are not found out? They kill people or they silence people with threats. That's what our United States government officials 
uh, particularly the CIA, have been doing. Okay, so moreover, uh, there seems to be an increasing tendency to hint that President Johnson himself, as the one person who might be said to have benefited, was in some way responsible for the assassination. Conspiracy theories have frequently thrown suspicion on our organization, the CIA, for example, by falsely alleging that Lee Harvey Oswald Oswald worked for us. The aim of this dispatch is to provide material for countering and discrediting the claims of the conspiracy theorists so as to inhibit the circulation of such claims in other countries and our country. So the action, we do not recommend that discussion of the assassination question be initiated where it is not already taking place. Where discussion is active, however, addresses are requested. And those, uh, I mean, this was back in 1967. So the actions to take are point out that the Warren Commission made as thorough an investigation as humanly possible. Charges of the critics are without serious foundation. Further speculative discussion only plays into the hands of the opposition, plays into the hands of our enemies. You're a traitor if you speak the truth. Point out parts of the conspiracy talk appear to be deliberately generated by communist prop uh, propagandists. Urge them to use their influence to discourage unfounded and irresponsible speculation. And I cannot believe everything that we are reliving. You know, the communists, it's the communists, it's Russia, it's Russia, it's Russia. And 1967, the Americans ha were already programmed, you know, by fear to fear that Soviet Union the communists, they just don't know that at that time, the United States and the Soviet Union were working together. Um, at that time, there were a whole lot of protests, civil rights protests. And think about, you know, it, it's, a, it's like they're bringing us back in time. BLM, our country is racist systemic racism that it did occur at that time. It was absolutely being dismantled, but now we're right back. We're, it's almost like we're reliving the 60s in accordance with the CIA, their playbook. Oh, my God. It's so... The lying, gaslighting, manipulating... You know, as the pathological narcissist, their behavior, the lying, gaslighting, manipulating, what they can do to an individual, well, think about an organization doing that to a whole people. You can end up with a very crazy country. Yeah, the communist propagandists. Urge them to use their influence to discourage unfounded and irresponsible speculation. Employ propaganda assets to answer and refute the attacks of the critics. Point out the critics are either or, or it's an and or, wedded to theories adopted before the evidence was in, politically interested, financially interested, Hasty, they have come up with their research in a hasty and inaccurate manner, infatuated with their own theories, and their own theories, their books, their articles, well, one becomes lost in a morass of unrelated details. 
in private or media discussion not directed at any particular writer or in attacking publications which may be yet forthcoming, the following arguments should be useful. No significant new evidence has emerged that the Commission has not already considered. No new evidence, no new culprits. And there is no agreement, even among the critics. Better parallel, through an imp though an imperfect one, might be the Reichstag fire of 1933, which some competent historians um, have stated that it was van der Lubbe on his own initiative. I'm not sure of these details, but many people believed it was either the communists or the Nazis. The Nazis tried to pin the blame on the communists. It was a false flag. It was a false flag committed by the Nazis to pin the blame on the communists. And boom, World War II begins. Critics usually overvalue particular, particular items and ignore others, place more emphasis on the recollections of individual eyewitnesses as opposed to the ballistic autopsy photographic evidence, which all of that evidence can be um, falsified. Conspiracy on the large scale often suggested would be impossible to conceal in the United States. That's a big one, and people fall for it all the time. And they'll point out an awful lot of um, aspects to the conspiracy that will make people simply say, you're right. At that time, Robert Kennedy, attorney general at the time, John F. Kennedy's brother would be the last man to overlook or conceal any conspiracy. Point out others, like uh, Gerald Ford, would hardly have held his tongue for the sake of the Democratic administration. Ford was... You know, he seems so innocent and so goofy and, and tripping all the time and golfing and just like an ordinary American. And he was not an ordinary American involved in a whole lot of crimes and sexual abuse. And he was right there with the very... I'm not religious, but the word that comes to mind is satanic. He was just a satanic. <sighs> Guys, this has been going on for a long time. And the more I see people speaking the truth, that inspires me. The more... I see people very passionate about the truth. That inspires me. But I have to tell you, I do feel like my light is going out. We need, we need healthy individuals in our lives. We need healthy communities in order to sustain a vibrant life. And it just seems as if more and more, based on the comments that I read, based on the emails that I get, you know, I, I listen to others talk about how they cannot find people who they can trust, who they can have healthy relationships with. Their families are turning on them. Their families so programmed getting this vaccine. 
And the weight of all of that bad energy is affecting all of us. So it's very hard to figure out what to do in the cyber world. That's why we needed real life. And that's why they literally, they literally flipped the switch in 2020 on real life to put us all in the cyber world. Many of us have been in that world for a long time because that's the world where we get our support because you can't find it in real life. But boy, did they shove everybody into this world with one flip of a switch. Oh my God, there's a pandemic. Can't work, non-essential. Closed stores, except for the big ones. Walmart, yeah, shop online, move everybody online, remote learning, remote medical, uh, suddenly the medical profession went remote, online, wow, so, oh, it's quite a time, and it really does demand an awful lot. The truth is very demanding. I think that's why a lot of people just eh, don't want to go there. Because it requires so much of us. And anybody who feels the truth is important. They can't just know it and not speak it. There's something that compels people to speak it. They have to. And it gets exhausting, especially when you realize you're just, <laughs> you know, spitting into the wind. All of the people in Congress, most of them, are so controlled by threats, by bribes, by... Um, And the American people are, they're not, you know, I used to believe that they were just too trusting. I, no, it's not that they're too trusting. They know they're being lied to. They don't care. That's the problem. You know, it's to move yourself up from the thinking that you care to that care that is generative, it generates action. The care that you have is genuine. It's not something that you just utter that word, oh, I care. But that requires a lot of work. It requires a lot of work on, for the individual to undertake. They have to do a lot of self-reflection to get out of living a life of what amounts to bullshit. So, yeah, point out that none of these people would ever, you know, cover up, conceal um, the truth. Conspirator, moreover, would hardly choose a location for a shooting where so much depended on conditions beyond his control, the route, the speed of cars, the moving target, the risk that the assassin would be discovered, a group of wealthy conspirators could have arranged much more secure conditions. Well, when you have a group of wealthy conspirator conspirators, and in this case, look into the Jesuits, who love to publicly traumatize with their um, with their incredible terror that they uh, subject a whole lot of innocent people to all over the world. The Jesuits were behind the assassination. The Jesuits were behind the Oklahoma bombing. And I should point out now, take a look at this book. 
The Secret Terrorists by Bill Hughes. An awful lot of very good information that is related to the Jesuit takeover of our country. And I'm just going to read some passages from it. Um, one here. This is the Oklahoma bombing. And it goes through a lot of um, history, how the Jesuits have been behind an awful lot of the terrorist attacks that have taken place. So the Oklahoma bombing, why was U.S. Judge Wayne Alley, whose office was located in the federal building, warned several weeks in advance in a Justice Department memo to be prepared for an unnamed terrorist act directed against the federal building. It's a playbook. Yeah, 9-11. How many people were warned beforehand, don't go to the World Trade Center on 9-11? Um, what else? Why did the Clinton administration blame right-wing radio talk shows for the incident? Right-wing being blamed, right? The... Uh, um, Hegelian dialectic has been at work on the American people forever. Divide and conquer. The right and the left wing work together. So the Clinton administration blames right wing radio talk shows for the incident and demand the most and they demanded the most draconian police state legislation ever proposed in the United States. So quickly after the blasts, what happened after 9-11? This proposed legislation was so well organized that it was obvious it had been prepared long before the destruction of the building, long before the destruction of the World Trade Center and all of the buildings, was prepared the Anti-Patriot Patriot Act. Um, it was the Omnibus Counterterrorism Act of 1995, and it was on a slow track in Congress the subject of a lively debate as to whether it would violate some fundamental civil liberties, including the right to confront one's accusers. After the Oklahoma City bombing, the right and the left come together to pass it immediately. If you can't get something through without a false flag, then you commit a false flag the Oklahoma City bombing. Um, and Clinton was right there. Clinton prodded Congress on Friday to move swiftly on his anti-terrorism legislation and avoid political endless quibbling over details. We must not dawdle or delay. Congress must act and act promptly his $1.25 billion anti-terrorism package would expand law enforcement's investigative and enforcement powers and toughen penalties for certain crimes. Well, I do, you know, if you can find this book, um, I recommend it. because you could learn a lot. Now, a lot of people are stuck on the Jews, on the Zionists. You're missing, you're missing the uh, level above the Zionists, the Jesuits. And, you know, so many there is so much to this whole um, New World Order agenda that it's, it's, 
when you think about it, for the average person out there that has no clue what is going on in life, when you begin to, you know, uh, do a little bit of research, it is so overwhelming. And it is, you know, difficult to believe that there are people so evil that they would do anything to get the job done, kill people, kill children, that they literally have traumatized children so that they would behave in a certain way as adults, that they could be used to get their agenda accomplished, that there really are only a very few people in the world that literally control everything, that's hard to believe, but one needs to believe it. Or one needs to consider it because they are destroying our life. And getting back to this document, one way to shut people up is call them a conspiracy theorist. Theorist. It's still going on. Still going on. So, yes, they would, the wealthy conspirators do something that was so public and include people that n anyone in their right mind would think they certainly wouldn't involve somebody like Oswald, the loner, the crazy guy. They would. It also gives them uh, plausible deniability. It's an aspect of plausible deniability. Critics have often been enticed by a form of intellectual pride, you know, personally malign the individual questioning what's, what has uh, taken place. They light on some theory and fall in love with it, they also scoff at the commission because it did not always answer every question with a flat decision one way or the other. The makeup of the commission and its staff was an excellent safeguard against overcommitment to any one theory. We had people from the left and the right, Democrats and Republicans. We made sure that they would question every possibility. Oswald would not have been any sensible person's choice for a con co conspirator. He was a loner, mixed up of questionable reliability and an unknown quantity to any professional intelligence service. And all of that can be said about a person after the fact of their life. He was dead. As to charges that the commission's report was a rush job, it emerged three months after the deadline. Originally set, the commission tried to speed up its reporting. This was largely due to the pressure of irresponsible speculation. Throw back the blame on the person who is questioning what is taking place. Um, irresponsible speculation already appearing coming from the same critics who, refusing to admit their errors, are now pointing out new criticisms, vague, they make vague accusations, as that more than 10 people have died mysteriously. Well, there were so many witnesses, and so many thousands of interviews and re-interviews, and that's exactly what they said about the 9-11 commission, exactly. The FBI interviewed far more people 
Everybody was involved. This investigation was as thorough as a human body could possibly engage in. And 10 people dying? Well, point out that they died of heart attacks. Back in 67, they already had the technology to kill people by heart attack. Cancer. One had a head-on collision. Driver drifted into a bridge abutment. Where possible, counter speculation by encouraging reference to the commission's report itself. Because they will be impressed by the care, the thoroughness, the objectivity, and speed with which the commission worked. Reviewers, reviewers of other books might be encouraged to add to their account the idea that checking back with the report itself, they found it far superior to the work of its critics. Influence the reviewers. Employ assets. Employ assets. Employ propaganda assets. Back in 67, think about the propaganda assets now on mainstream media. When people do not have a moral core, it is very easy to get them to lie, to gaslight, to manipulate others for their own financial benefit. That's where we are. This has been going on forever. So think about all of the people in this country who are so messed up, they don't know what the truth is from a lie. And yeah, then think about William Casey, CIA director, Ronald Reagan, I think he, 81 to 87, 1981 to 87, will know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false.